chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19, and commencing to read at verse number 1. Genesis 19, and beginning to read at verse number 1. And there came two angels to Sodom and even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold, now, my Lord, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned into him, and entered into his house. And he made them a feast, and did bake on leaving bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. And Lot went out at the door unto them, and shut the door after him, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as it is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came into sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters? And whatsoever thou hast in this city, bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth, and set him without the city. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life, look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, O not so, my Lord, behold, now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. Behold, now this city is near to flee unto, and, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for over this city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape hither, for I cannot do anything till thou come hither. 
Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. And the sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar, and then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven, and He overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. And then Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, the Lord Jesus says, Luke 17, verse 29, But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven, and destroyed them all. Even though shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed, in that day he which shall be upon the housetop, and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing upon the reading of his own precious word this evening. So many people say to me, and so many men preach to me, that the simplest thing on this earth to do, the simplest thing to do tonight is to get saved. Wonder do you believe that this evening? The most simplest thing to do on earth is to get, is to get saved. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 16, verse 31, we're told, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Is it that simple? What did Paul say in Romans 10, 13? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Is it? That simple. John chapter 3, 16. We read, Therefore God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Is it that simple to me? Is it that simple to get sealed? Is it that easy to get sealed? Why did the Lord Jesus ask this question if it was so simple? Why did the Lord Jesus say this tonight in, in Matthew 7, verse 14, if it was that easy to be saved? Did the Lord Jesus not say, Straight is the gate, and narrow the way which leadeth unto life? And few, and few, there be that find it. And few, few there be that find it. If it was that simple this evening, why are multitudes not getting saved? If it was that simple tonight, that easy, why is there many not getting saved? Why is there only few that finds the gate this evening? I'll tell you why. It's not easy to get saved, that's why. It's not a simple matter in getting saved. Do you want to know why? Because the devil doesn't make it simple. And the devil doesn't make it easy. Paul says, The God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. The devil doesn't make it simple. And I'll tell you something else, the devil doesn't make it easy. And there's another thing that makes it hard to get saved tonight. It's, it's not just the devil, it's the cost. Do you remember the day the rich young ruler came and fell at the feet of the Lord Jesus? And he cried from the bottom of his heart, what must I do that I may inherit eternal life? And the Lord Jesus told him what to do. Did he get saved? No, he didn't. 
He went away sorrowful. The cost was too great. Let me tell you, friend, tonight, it's not a simple thing. And it's not an easy thing at all to get saved. Let me tell you what is simple tonight. Let me tell you the simplest thing to do in this earth. Let me tell you tonight what the easiest thing to do in this earth tonight. The most easiest thing on this earth tonight is for you to be lost, not to be saved. The most easiest thing, the most simplest thing that you can do in this earth is to be lost tonight. All you have to do to end up in hell is do nothing. All you have to do tonight is close your ears, close your heart. The hardest thing to do is get saved. And the easiest thing to do is to be lost. Remember Lot's wife? That's my text tonight. Remember Lot's wife. The Lord Jesus never told us to remember anybody else apart from Lot's wife. Didn't tell us to remember Abraham. Didn't tell us to remember about Moses. He says, remember Lot's wife. Why would you want us to remember Lot's wife for Lord? She's the one woman that shows us how easy it is to be lost. When I remember Lot's wife, the first thing I remember about her, you know, is her position. I remember the position of Lot's wife. Do you know where she was? She was in a place that was doomed for death and doomed for destruction. She was in a place tonight where condemnation was wrote all over it. She was in a place tonight where God's judgment and wrath was coming. That's what I remember, first of all, about Lot's wife tonight. Boys, but I remember her position. You know, dear unsafe friend tonight, you remember Lot's wife. Because where she was is where you are now. Unsafe person tonight. I'm not up here to riffraff or waffle. I'm up here to make this clear and simple. You're in the place tonight, you're in the position tonight where you're doomed for death and destruction and hell. Where you are positioned tonight, God's judgment is on its way. Where you are tonight, you are condemned before God. You see, that's where sin places you tonight. Your sin. Everybody talks about drink awareness today. Everybody talks about suicide awareness today. Everybody talks about drug awareness. When are we going to get to sin awareness? Sin's worse than drink. Sin's worse than suicide. Sin's worse than drugs tonight. Friend, we need to be sin conscious. And this is where sin tonight, your sin that you were born into, that's where it positions you tonight. And because of your sin, you're heading for death. You're heading for judgment. You're heading for hell. Does it not scare you tonight? Does it not make you afraid tonight? 
death and judgment is on its way. Remember Lot's wife not just because of her position, You remember Lot's wife tonight because of her privilege. There was nobody on this earth more privileged than Lot's wife. Tell me or name me another person that had two angels, two angels from heaven, abiding in their house all night. Not one other person had that privilege. You imagine this evening, this woman and this family and this home having two angels from heaven in that very home. And there's two things that she was given. She was given truth. She was told by the angels, the Lord hath sent us to destroy this place. I'm telling you, if there ever was a woman privileged, it was Lot, Lot's wife. She was well taught that night about the coming judgment. She was well taught that night concerning the danger of staying where she was. She was well taught that night about God's hatred for sin. She was well taught. Here was a woman who had two angels that preached the gospel to her. Two angels escape hither, make haste, flee for their wife. Man, you think if there was two angels, you would listen to them. And she was given this great truth. And she was told and she was warned Many times have you heard the truth? Week in, week out. Month in, month out. Year in, year out. And as long as I'm in this pulpit, you'll get the truth. Because I don't want any of your blood in my hands when I meet God. And not only was she given truth, she was given time. All night, she was given time to get out. She was given time to flee. You know, friends, this evening, how many times have you been given time? Think of remember Lot's wife tonight. A woman that had two angels in her very home. Two angels to preach the gospel. And I'll tell you something else about her. She was the only woman that I ever knew or the only person that I ever knew that was taken by an angel's hand to help her flee. There's not too many I know had their hand in the hand of an angel or had an angel to take them by their hand to escape from the judgment to come. There's not too many I know, and only her. She's the only one that ever had an angel to take her by the hand to escape. You remember Lot's wife tonight. Remember her position. Remember her privilege. You remember this night, her problem. Boys, there's many like Lot's wife tonight. 
It wasn't that she didn't believe in God. I'll tell you what was wrong with that. It, that's why if it wasn't that she didn't believe in God, she didn't believe God. That's what was wrong. Many people in the kingdom of mourn the night, they believe in God, but they don't believe God. They don't believe when God said, you must be born again. They won't believe that. Oh, they believe in God, all right. But they don't believe him when he said, neither is there salvation in any other. For there's none other name under heaven given amongst men, whereby we must be saved. Oh, they don't like the word saved. They don't believe in it. The big problem with her was disbelief. If you ask the man and the rich man in hell tonight, why are you there for? You know what he would say? Disbelief. There's people sitting in churches tonight. Believe in God, but they don't believe his word. Believe in God, but they don't believe the gospel. Believe in God on the road to hell. That's what's wrong. Is that what's wrong with you tonight? You believe in God, but you don't believe in what God says. Remember Lot's wife. Her problem wasn't just disbelief. Her problem was disobedience. Escape for thy life, she was told. And then there came the warning, look not behind thee. I don't think there was anything complicated that Lot's wife didn't understand. Escape for thy life. Don't look behind ye. The way of salvation was made clear. The way of salvation was made plain. I want to make it clear and plain for you tonight by telling you of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one tonight who went to Calvary's cross. He's the one that was crucified. Why? Why? Because there was no other good enough to pay the price for sin. He only could unlock the gate of heaven to let us in. And on that old rugged blood-stained cross, crucified there, he was taking your place and mine. And on that dark hill of Calvary, he suffered the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. And there on that old rugged cross, he suffered and bled and died in your guilty room instead. And you must come to him tonight and put your trust in him who died and rose again, or you will face the judgment and wrath of God. Remember Lot's wife. All it took was just one look. One look. One look. And she was lost. You remember Lot's wife tonight. Remember her position. That's where you are. Remember her privilege. Remember her problem, but you remember her punishment. One look. And she stepped into damnation. One look. And she stepped into hell. Lost over 
one simple look. Donald Stewart was a preacher in the west coast of Scotland. He was a padre in the boats that patrolled the west and north coast of Scotland in the last war. They were out patrolling, watching out for submarines. And one evening they headed for the port they were heading home. And one of the wee lads on the boat said to Donald Stewart, he says, Padre, Padre, he said, do you think when we get to the port I could go home and see my mother for an hour? And the Padre says, well, it's not up to me. You have to go and ask the captain. He ran up the stairs into the wheelhouse and asked the captain, and the captain says, son, certainly we are in for a few days. Go you and see your mother. And the wee lad was all excited. Couldn't wait to get home to see mama. And as the ship was docking, the wee lad was coming across. And he jumped from the boat, but He missed the harbor and went down between the harbor and the ship. And the propeller of the ship almost had him cut in half. It was terrible. Donald Stewart was caught, called by the captain. He says, Padre Stewart, you may go up and tell his mother. Donald Stewart did not know how he was going to face and tell the boy's mama. He went up the wee street and he prayed, Lord, how am I going to break this news? He went into the wee house where she lived and found her in the scullery. Oh, Donald, oh, Mr. Stewart, you're home. Good to see you. My boy will be back soon. Donald Stewart was breathless, speechless. He says, you must sit down, dear. Your boy's dead. He's dead. Your boy's dead, dear. What happened to him? He tried to jump from the ship to the harbor, but missed it. He lost his life. And the mother sat and she broke down and she cried as a mother would. And these were her words. So near home, but lost. There's so many so near saved tonight. So near saved, but lost. Lot's wife. She was so near, but lost. Remember Lot's wife tonight. For God wants you to see how simple it is to lose your soul. Lost. Over a look and perished because of it. Before you leave tonight, 
you remember Lot's wife. We're not going to sing tonight. We're going to pray. Everybody bow their heads, please, and close your eyes. And you, God's people, you pray. And if there's anybody in this meeting tonight and you're not saved, don't you take the fatal step. You come to the Savior. Lord, this evening, in these moments, we pray earnestly. Help these people tonight, perhaps any that's not saved, Lord, to be wise tonight. And Lord, no matter how difficult as we know it is to be saved, this is why we pray, Lord, give deciding grace, we pray. And Lord, when we leave this tabernacle, may we be conscious of thy speaking voice, thy striving spirit, Impart us now in thy fear and with thy blessing, and take us now to our homes in safety. For Christ's sake we pray. Amen. If anybody would like to speak to me, please come and see me now.